So if I had to pick one word to explain what's happened in the last uh, six months, a year, that word would be scalability. We've seen on many occasions in the past changes in supplies of oil. But in each case, the supplies that came on were usually very large scale. They took a long time to develop, a long time, a long term, they involve long term investments, and they have long lifetimes. This time, uh, shale oil is a new technology, um, at least only recently commercialized on a, large, on a large scale, that allows one to bring on supply in tiny increments. The cost of a, of a shale oil well is three orders of magnitude lower than an Arctic uh, oil well or some other undersea facility. So now what's happening is because of this scalable response that's possible by the shale producers, the um, strategic behavior of OPEC is fundamentally changed. I can think of no other event or circumstance since 1973 that has resulted in the kind of structural change in this industry than this scalability of shale and the consequent effect on strategic behavior. Uh, most of my research is in econometrics, some of it's in theoretical econometrics, and in energy economics. And the paper that I presented at this conference had to uh, do with how does one discern long-term trends in commodity prices in general and in hydrocarbon prices, that is in oil, natural gas, and coal prices in particular. And it does involve some statistical um, technology, uh, but um, one of the conclusions is that if you take a look at the entire 20th century and into the 21st century, it's remarkable how closely the overall shape of the price path for oil, natural gas, and coal, how, the, how similar the shapes of these price paths have been. Uh, I, I teach courses in energy economics and in econometrics. I also teach a course in, uh, that's entitled Big Ideas in Energy. Actually, it's, I co-teach it with a physicist and with a historian. And um, a main objective of the course is to identify big ideas in energy. Uh, for example, the idea of an airfoil, which allows us to sail against the wind, was what lay behind the first globalization on the planet in the 1500s, when European empires expanded all around the world. That same principle, the, the principle of the airfoil in physics, the principle called the Bernoulli principle, is what enables us to fly. A second example is asks by ask, begins by asking the question, um, why is it that, that carbon is so central to understanding energy? Carbon, as in hydrocarbons, natural gas, oil and coal. Carbon, as in carbohydrates, from which we get energy in our bodies. And the simple answer is that carbon, as an element, has a very gregarious nature. It forms bonds easily, and it dissolves bonds easily. And in dissolving those bonds, it releases energy. And it can do so in many, many, many ways. So the big idea there is the gregarious nature of carbon.